Hey everyone, continuing our look at cells. This lesson will focus on the features of living things. And so in our previous lessons, we learned about the discovery of the cell by a man named Robert Hooke. And so he took cork and put it under a microscope and he saw little chambers that he called cells, which is where the term come from. It reminded him of the cells that monks lived in. And then later on, there was a man by the name of Anton von Leeuwenhoek and he looked at pond water under his microscope and he saw little things moving around and he called them animalcules because he didn't know what else to name them. And then a couple scientists later on came up with, three scientists exactly, came up later on with the cell theory. And there were three parts to the cell theory. Part one, that um, all cells are made of one or more cells. Part two, that the most basic structure and function um, of all organisms is the cell. And then part three, that all cells come from previous cells or other cells. And so now that we know that all living things come from cells or are made of cells, we need to kind of figure out what exactly do cells need. So there are eight things that uh, cells need or do. And the first thing is that they reproduce. And so you can see here there is a, a male lion and a female lion. And when they reproduce, they form offspring, which is similar to the parents. And so the offspring uh, can have like an identical look to the parents or it can have uh, traits of both of the parents like the lion cub does here. Whenever we talk about reproduction, there's two types of reproduction, asexual repro reproduction, which means that it's just from a single parent cell. So things like bacteria, uh, bacteria will split or duplicate. Um, it'll split from one cell into two and two into four. And so each bacteria is identical to the, the previous parent cell. Also some plants, not all, but some plants can also go through asexual reproduction. The other type of reproduction is sexual reproduction. This is where you have two uh, parent sex cells. So in animals, you have the, the sperm and the egg. If you were talking about plants, you would have pollen and ovules. And those are our two types of reproduction. The second thing that all living things need is that they, they grow. And so living things will increase in size. As they grow, they get bigger naturally. And as you can see here in the pictures, there is my daughter at a couple months old versus my daughter last week. And she has grown significantly over that amount of time. She has increased in size. Living things also develop. And so what that means is when living things, uh, as they grow, there's changes that occur got two examples here. The example on the left is an example of a tadpole. Um, as a tadpole grows, it eventually turns into a frog, not looking like it did when it was a young tadpole. The example on the right is an example of a bean plant. So when you take a bean seed and you plant it, as it grows, it develops uh, and it grows a longer stem and it grows uh, leaves and everything that comes with that. So that is development in living things. Living things also need food. So there are two types of um, uh, ways that living things get their food. Way number one is you are a consumer. Uh, consumers eat other living things. So a majority of most people and animals are uh, consumers. We, we go out there and we buy our food. Um, you know, earlier, you know, way back when they would hunt their own food, but still they were eating other living things. Uh, other types of ways to get food is what's called a producer and they make their own food. Uh, humans cannot make their own food. We have to go get our food. Uh, but plants, as an example, make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. So you're either a consumer or a producer. Uh, living things use energy. So everything that you do on a daily basis requires energy, and, and everything that anything does requires energy. Uh, whether it's just something as simple as breathing and sleeping, or a little more complex like moving. But no matter what, you are constantly using energy. So um, living things use energy. Living things are made of cells. This was kind of discussed in the cell theory and it has to be made of one or more cells. So if it's made of one cell, it's called a unicellular organism. And there's an example of an amoeba. And there are other types of unicellular cellular organisms. Or if you're made of more than one cell, many cells, you're multicellular. Again, I've used an example, the picture of my daughter, which you are composed of many, many, many cells, each cell having its own specific uh, function to do a different thing 
for your body. If we go back to using uh, energy, you have cells that are specific for, uh, for, movi for moving, for breathing, uh, for processing your food. So cells are um, the, the most basic part of a living thing and either have one or you have more than one. Living things also respond and when they respond, they respond to changes in their environment. So you can see the picture of the, the plant on the left. The plant is growing towards the sun. It responds to the sunlight. It needs the sunlight to produce its own food. It's a producer through photosynthesis. The dog on the right is responding by fetching a stick and then when the owner calls for the dog, the dog will respond to the owner and run back. Uh, whenever you respond to any stimuli in your environment, you are showing a response and that also shows that you are living. Living things adapt. Um, whenever you adapt, this helps you survive in your environment. So you can think of all different types of animals that have certain adaptations. Um, I use the example here of a giraffe. A giraffe has a very long neck which allows it to uh, eat food uh, higher up off the ground than other animals and therefore um, it has more of a continual food supply than those that can't reach as high. That's an adaptation to the giraffe. Finally, the last thing I have here, so those were the, the previous eight things, were the eight things that all living things need or do. This is just something additional. This is what's called the uh, chemistry of life. So we just finished studying chemistry. So when we talk about living things, we learn that everything is made of matter. And so therefore living things, us and everything I just discussed in the previous slides, are also made of matter. Uh, but what exactly uh, makes up that matter? So you can see here on the chart that there is primarily seven different elements that make up uh, roughly 99% of all living things. And I've got their percentages listed there for you with oxygen being the top uh, element that makes up the most of all living things followed by carbon and hydrogen all the way down to some smaller percentages for nitrogen, um, calcium, phosphorus, and sulfur. And then there's a variety of other elements that fall in there too. So those were our notes on the uh, the features of living things, what living things need and do, and the chemistry of life. Thank you for joining me again on these notes and I'll see you again next time.